Hi, and welcome to this session where we'll take a look at the ASCE Seismic Wall Anchorage module in the Structural Engineering Library. To access this module, we already have a project file working right now. What we'll do is expand the Loads and Forces division and then double click on the Seismic Wall Anchorage item. Now this module does two things for us. It calculates the force that's required to design the wall itself for seismic effects and it also calculates and reports the anchorage force that we have to design for. When the module opens it comes up to the general tab which offers us the option to provide a description that would be at a project level so what we might do is uh, type in something like uh, gymnasium walls. And then we'll come over to the wall anchorage tab and just take a look at everything that we have to work with in this interface. First on the left, notice that we can define up to 20 different walls specific to this particular project. And then for each of these wall tabs, there's an associated print checkbox that indicates whether or not this selected wall will be included in a project print. Soon as I toggle that print checkbox, the little icon changes to indicate that it is a printed or an included calculation as opposed to the other type of icon, which can still be saved and uh, retained within the project file, but just won't be printed when a project print is done. The next thing that I'll do is come over to the description. Now, this is a description that's specific to the selected wall, so this might be something like uh, North Wall of Jim. Beneath that, notice that we have a toggle to choose which ASCE7 code we want to reference. The options are to either use ASCE710 or to drop back to ASCE705. If you just glance at the screen, what you'll see as I toggle back and forth between these two options is that everything stays the same down to the point where we've calculated the out of plane force for structural wall design. The changes will occur below this line and those are the forces that are for the anchorage design. So notice that the anchorage design force is what's different as we move between the two, uh, two versions of ASCE 7. What we'll do for now is leave it on ASCE 705 and work through ASCE 705. Then we'll come back up and revisit and study the changes uh, to this calculation when we use ASCE 710. Okay, so as far as the numerical input is concerned, the first thing that it asks us for is the value of SDS. So I'm just going to assume that I've done some work in the seismic base shear module and I've already determined that the value of SDS for our project is 0.139. And then I need to enter the importance factor. So I'll assume that I have a value of 1.25 for this project. The next thing that we need to enter is the wall weight. Now, naturally, you may have some cheat sheets or some references that you can use to look up the weights of different types of walls. But because it's a common use of this module to be doing these calculations for masonry walls, I'd just like to point out that in the Structural Engineering Library, there is an item in the databases menu that provides reinforced uh, or concrete masonry uh, unit data. So if I choose that option and then select the standard that I'm interested in using, um, what we can do then is select our grout weight and our block weight and come into the table and take a look at whatever our, our reinforced cell spacing is and come up with a pretty quick estimate as to what the weight of that wall might be. So for our purposes, I'll use this value of 77 pounds per square foot. So I'll just come back in and edit that wall weight to 77 and we're ready to go. As far as our wall height, I'm going to assume that this is a gym wall, so perhaps it's about 25 feet tall. And I'll assume that this is interior to a building uh, and it comes up underneath a, a concrete diaphragm so it doesn't have an associated parapet height with it. Next we see some information reported for us here. So we see a tributary height that's going to be used in the calculation of the, the forces below 
and that's being calculated as half the wall height plus any defined parapet height. And then we see the calculation of the tributary weight. So this is on a per uh, unit foot, um, one, one foot width of strip measured along the length of the wall. And we can see that that's being calculated based on the tributary height times the wall weight. Now we get into the uh, important information, which is the out of plane force that we will use for structural wall design based on seismic loading considerations. And the note indicates that this is relevant for all seismic design categories. So the standard tells us that we need to use two different calculations and select the larger of the two values. The first calculation being 0.4 times SDS times the importance factor times that unit weight. And what we end up with is about 67 pounds per linear foot of wall length. The other calculation is 10% of the wall weight. That one turns out to control. So we see a controlling value here of 96.25 pounds per linear foot. So in other words, for every linear foot measured along the length of the wall, each one of those unit strips would be subjected to 96.25 pounds. Now as we move down the sheet, we can see that we're starting to get into the forces for wall anchorage design, different and unique from wall design forces themselves. When we use ASC 705, we actually have two different options. We will fall into one of these two options. The first one is for all seismic design categories where structural walls connect to rigid diaphragms and also used for seismic design categories A and B where walls connect to flexible diaphragms. The other option being all those that are excluded from the first option, so that would be used for seismic design categories C through F, where walls connect to flexible diaphragms. So depending upon which of these two categories we fall into, we can then come down and read three different calculated values based on the reference formulas. And then we can see a controlling value reported, which just takes the maximum of those three. And then in this case, it's actually one, two, three, four different formulas that need to be evaluated and the controlling value is reported. Now remember that from this point down, Anchorage design, so far what we've seen is the version that's based on ASCE 705. Let's just toggle this to ASCE 710 and study the difference. What we see now is that things get simpler in the sense that there are not two different categories, but we can also see that we have to provide a little bit of additional information in order to complete the calculation. So let's just assume that the height of our roof over the gym is at, uh, we'll say 50 feet. And based on our wall height of 25 feet, we'll say that's the height of our anchor which is at 25, remembering that this wall is not coming all the way up to the underside of the roof deck. And then we need to provide the span length of a flexible diaphragm, or we need to enter zero if it's rigid. So we're coming up underneath a rigid diaphragm in this case, so we'll enter a value of zero. And then we have a checkbox that says the anchorage is not at the roof and all diaphragms are not flexible. So if that's true, we keep this selected. If that's not true, then we deselect this. And what we can see is that this alters this multiplier right here as specified by ASCE 710. So for our situation, we'll indicate that that condition is true. Our anchorage is definitely not at the roof and all diaphragms are not flexible. So we end up with this value for the multiplier which results in this value for K sub A. And then we have a value calculated based on equation 12, 11, 1. And we have a lower limit that we need to compare that to. And in this case, that lower limit ends up controlling. So our anchorage force for this particular wall would turn out to be 241 pounds per linear foot. Okay, so that's a thorough look at everything that we have available to us in the 
ASCE Seismic Wall Anchorage Module. Hopefully it's been helpful. Thanks for joining us. Take care and have a great day.